This review contains cutscenes as well as minor spoilers from the first hour of the game. Be advised. Welcome back to the Game Collection. Before we really get started, I'd like to thank Square Enix for sending me a copy of Trials of Mana for review. And even though I did receive this game for free, all of the views and opinions that I expressed throughout the review are entirely my own. They don't even get to see this before it goes live. Now, that out of the way, I am Super Derek, and this is Trials of Mana. And it might just be the best remake I've ever played. Trials of Mana is a remake of Seiken Densetsu 3, an action RPG Squaresoft released on the Super Famicom back in 1995. It was only just recently brought to the West by Square Enix in the collection of Mana on the Nintendo Switch, which I just reviewed a couple of weeks ago. If you're interested in the whole history of the game and its 20-year-long journey to the West, make sure you check out that review. And if you like RPGs, make sure you get subscribed because that's pretty much all we do here. Trials of Mana follows all of the same basic story beats as the original release on Super Famicom, and just like its predecessor, the game opens with a choice between six characters. Duran, the noble swordsman, Hawkeye, the cunning thief, Kevin, the beastly berserker, Angela, the princess magician, Reese, the Amazon warrior, and Charlotte, the powerful cleric in training. You pick three of these characters, and the first person you pick becomes your main character for the playthrough, and will determine which of the three paths through the game that you will take. I picked Reese as my main character this time around, not realizing that hers would be the same story as Hawkeye from my last playthrough. This worked out pretty well though, because it helped me see just how closely the remake matched up to the original release, and I think I did spot a few subtle differences. The story of Reese picks up with her looking for her little kid brother, Elliot, who ought to be starting his training at any minute, but he's nowhere to be found. As it happens, he's been tricked by a couple of ninjas, Bill and Ben, into turning off their fortress's defenses. Reese finds Elliot just a moment too late, and a slaughter ensues. Her brother is kidnapped, her father, the leader of Laurent, is murdered, and the Laurent fortress falls to the Nerval thieves. Reese survives the catastrophe and sets out on a journey to avenge her father and rescue Elliot from his captors. Eventually, Reese meets up with Fairy, who tells her about the Sword of Mana, which she may be able to use toward her ends. And all of this happens within the first hour of the game, and what follows is a story of epic proportions. This is just one of the six unique character backgrounds that the game has to offer, and each one is just as interesting. In seeing the whole thing play out in fully voice acted and motion capped cutscenes was absolutely awesome, and a lot more emotionally impactful, I think. Again, I love that this is another relatively low stakes start to a story that snowballs into much larger proportions, and the motivation of setting out to save your brother and avenge your fallen father is a nice and simple one too. The overall story hasn't been changed all that much from the original release, but I did notice while I was playing through this time around that your secondary characters do get a lot more time to shine during cutscenes than I think they did in the original release. Even some of the characters that I didn't put into my party each got a small bit of a spotlight for a few moments during scenes that interconnected with their stories, which I thought was also a really nice touch. I'm not entirely sure if these scenes were newly added, or if they just happened to be more impactful due to the way that they were presented in the remake, but the difference was definitely noticeable. During my playthrough on the Super Nintendo version, I of course enjoyed myself a whole lot, but I think that one of the biggest differences with this release this time around is the game made me care a whole lot more about the stories of the characters themselves. I didn't expect to feel this much of a difference in the transition from 2D to 3D, but I definitely do feel it. 
There are probably a multitude of reasons for this. Maybe it was the voice acting that did it, or the cinematography during cutscenes, or just the less abstract way that the details of each story was conveyed. I'm not positive, but I can say that at the end of the day, Trials of Mana benefited heavily from the update to the modern consoles from a narrative perspective, which I had marked as one of the game's weaker points in my previous experience. The characters themselves got a whole lot of extra time to shine even outside of cutscenes though, with mid-battle banter or casually commenting on the situation after leaving a town or walking through a dungeon. The development team has done a lot to breathe new life into each of the characters, providing them with more depth and improving that connection to the player. The voice acting here is pivotal to that aspect of the game, and the Japanese voice acting was fantastic, and how I played the game for the vast majority of the experience. Toward the end of the game though, I switched over to the English voices to see how that was, and that's far more of a mixed bag than I had hoped for. Some characters were voiced spot on, and others just weren't quite right. I don't speak Japanese, so maybe some of it is that I just couldn't pick up on any of the problems with the Japanese dub, but some of it is also simply that the delivery and tone and sound of the voices seemed to match up better in Japanese. The English dub is serviceable enough for those who prefer English voiceover though. Oh, well, yes, I am a Man of Stone scholar. <clears throat> There were once eight mana stones, but... Battle Within Trials of Mana is an enormous change from the original 2D release, for probably obvious reasons. The whole battle system has been completely revamped and is very fun. I was afraid that the game would turn into a mindless button masher, and that might get you a ways into the game, but eventually you'll find that you need to start using some of the basic combos that are built into the battle system. There are two kinds of attacks in the game, a quick attack and a strong attack. Combos mostly consist of hitting the fast attack button one to four times and a follow-up with a strong attack. And performing these combos deal far and away more damage than simply button mashing. This is especially important to keep in mind during some boss fights down the line which require you to break an enemy's guard within a time frame to avoid devastating attacks. In addition to combos, there are also class strikes that you can unleash once you've built up your meter, very similar to the system in the original Trials of Mana release. Attacking enemies causes these crystals to chip off the enemies which you need to gather to boost up your gauge. Once the gauge is full, you can unleash various levels of powerful attacks which become more and more powerful as you ascend through your class ranks. Also, during battle you can map menu items and spells to hotkeys so intense fights don't have to be interrupted by pausing the game to go through a menu system every time. That said, I pretty much didn't take advantage of this during my playthrough, mainly because some of the fights were so fast paced that I actually benefited from pausing the game to select spells and also gather my thoughts or remember which moves I wanted to use. Super cool though to have the option. Something else I really appreciated was being able to see what kind of effect a spell would have against a target before shooting off the spell. Now you can find out if a spell will have no effect on an enemy, or if the enemy will be weak to your spell without wasting the MP, which was extremely useful. The battle system also implemented a jump and dodge roll mechanic for reaching flying enemies and avoiding damage from enemies and spells respectively. There's really so much going on here that I'd like to be able to talk about, but for the sake of brevity, let me just say that the modern action RPG battle system is really awesome. It feels very similar to East 8, which is absolutely a compliment to Trials of Mana. If you want to know more about my thoughts on East 8, make sure you check out that review. Outside of battle though, there are still plenty of things to do such as exploring the newly realized world in three dimensions. There are treasure chests hidden everywhere, pots to smash holding loot and stat recovery, and glowing spots that you can gather from that hold things like money and equipment. Also hidden throughout the world are little cactus sightings. Think of these guys kind of like mini medals from Dragon Quest. The more you find, the more rewards you get in the form of discounts at shops, bonus experience points, and map upgrades. It's actually pretty addicting to go looking for little cactuses, and I found myself hunting for them all over the place, even though I was playing through this game at a mad dash pace for this review. 
Aesthetically, Trials of Mana is awesome. I played this on the Nintendo Switch for the purpose of this review, and for the most part, the game played at a smooth 60 frames per second, with frames dropping only occasionally during the craziest, busiest parts of the game, which I only noticed occur less than a handful of times. The sprites from Trials of Mana translated perfectly into 3D in this timeless, cel-shaded art style. I personally have always loved this aesthetic in games, and Trials of Mana is no exception. If you're looking for something with incredible visual fidelity, this might not be your cup of tea, but I think the art style is a perfect representation of the 2D artwork brought to life in 3D. And musically, Trials of Mana kills it yet again. The music that was so awesome on the Super Nintendo has again been beautifully adapted for the remake. But if you're really just a glutton for the original soundtrack, an option exists to switch to that version at any point. The Trials of Mana remake, I think, is probably the most successful remake that I have ever played. It's faithful to the original source material to the T, but also further expands upon what was already there in a way that complements the original. The battle system was updated to fit the new platform and format of the game, but pays homage to the original. It follows the same story beats and adds to them on the periphery, making sure not to affect that which made the original so great to begin with. If you haven't already played the original, I'd say you could get a similar or even better experience by playing the remake. And though I'm hesitant to say that you no longer have to play the original, if you only could play one, I'd probably recommend the remake. And it feels really good to be able to say that. It's not very often that a remake can make me feel this way. And that's why it's easily earned itself a spot in the game collection.